The rulings relating to The rulings relating to celebrating the New Year's Ruling on Muslims congratulating one another on the occasion of the Gregorian New Year Question Is it permissible for Muslims to congratulate each other and give dua on the New Year based on the Gregorian calendar without the intention of celebrating it? Answer Praise be to Allah It is not permissible for the Muslims to exchange greetings on the occasion of the Gregorian New Year, and it is not permissible for them to celebrate it. Because both of these matters involve imitation of the Kufar, and we have been forbidden to do that. The Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, Whoever imitates a people is one of them. Narrated by Abu Dawud. Forty thirty one, classed as Sahih by Al Albani and Sahih Sunan Abi Dawud. Moreover, offering greetings on this day that comes back each year comes under the heading of celebrating it and taking it as a festival which is also forbidden. And Allah knows best. Should they join their father in celebrating the Gregory New Year so that they can get some money from him for their mother who is poor? Question. I am a young Muslim man, 20 years old, and I have a younger brother who is 14 years old. My mother is Muslim, but my father has apostatized and left us a while ago. He lives in a foreign country, and he is of foreign origin. We did not know that he had apostatized until after we visited him. Now we live with him, and our mother lives in a Muslim country. My brother and I live in a disbelieving country, but we cannot go back because we do not have any money, or a visa for me and my brother. Our passports are foreign and we need a visa to enter, our mother's country, otherwise we will be sent back. We are students and do not have any money. Anyway, we live with our apostate father, but our problem is that in the house there are images and alcohol, and his girlfriend, and it has got to the point that I hate him very much. But I cannot say no to him. If he tells us to do something, even if it is something that is contrary to Islam, I respond, yet at the same time I hate him in my heart because of his apostasy, and because of the way he treats us. To the point that I am thinking of leaving the house. We are faced with the problem of Christmas parties. My brother and I celebrate them so that we can take money from my father and send it to my mother, because there is no one who spends on her and she has no income. Even though my father apostatized and divorced her a long time ago, he still sends her money every month. And at Christmas my brother and I celebrate with him so that we can get some money from him and send it to our mother. Is this permissible? Answer. Related. Praise be to Allah. What we advise you to do when interacting with your father is to try hard to be kind to him and bring him back to the religion of Islam using a gentle approach. By treating him nicely and interacting with him kindly, being patient with his annoyance, and advising him in a gentle and kind manner, in the hope that he may pay heed. Especially since you do not have any other means, and you are poor and have no choice but to live with your father, so you have no option but to deal with him gently and try to soften his heart. However at the same time you must hate what your father is following of disbelief, misguidance, and sin, and you must stay away from him when he is committing sin. And not sit with him or give him the impression that you approve of it under any circumstances. As for your joining him in his celebration of the so-called New Year, this is something objectionable and is not permissible. Because it is well known that the Muslims do not have any festivals except Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, and the weekly Eid that is Jumu'ah. Any celebration of any other festival is not allowed, and can only be one of two things. Innovation, bidat, if it is celebrated as a means of drawing closer to Allah, such as celebrating the Prophet's birthday, Maulid, or imitating the disbelievers. If it is celebrating by way of custom or tradition, not as an act of worship, because introducing innovative festivals is the practice of the people of the book whom we are commanded to differ from. So how about if this celebration itself is one of their festivals? What you have mentioned about needing to take money from your father to send to your mother, and that this is not possible except by joining him in this reprehensible celebration, does not justify your taking part in this great evil especially since your father is not obliged to spend on your mother's maintenance because his relationship with her ended when he divorced her. Rather her maintenance is due from her children, so long as she is in need. Rather than taking part in this evil, it is better for you to look for a job that is compatible with your studies, and then spend on your mother from your salary.
and thus become financially independent of your father. And Allah knows best. Is it permissible for us to gather on New Year's Eve to remember Allah, offer supplication, do a and read Quran? Question. This is a message that I have seen a lot on the internet, but in fact I have not sent it to anyone because I am not sure if it is an innovation, bidat, or not. Is it permissible to spread it and will we be rewarded for doing so, or is this not permissible because it is an innovation? Inshallah, at 12 midnight on New Year's Eve we will all pray to Rak Ahs, or read Quran, or remember our Lord, or offer doing a. Because if our Lord looks at the earth at a time when most of the world is disobeying him, he will find that the Muslims are still obeying him. By Allah, you have to send this message to everyone you know, because the more our numbers increase, the more our Lord will be pleased. Please advise me, may Allah bless you. Answer. Praise be to Allah. You have done very well not to spread this message which is widespread on many websites on which uneducated attitudes and ignorance prevail. With regard to those who publish this message and want the Muslims to pray and recite Dikar, we do not doubt that their intentions are good and great. Especially if they want acts of obedience and worship to be done at a time when sins are being committed. But this good and righteous intention does not make the actions legitimate, sound, or acceptable in Sharia. Rather it is essential that the action be in accordance with Sharia in terms of its reason, time, quantity, manner, time, and place. For a detailed discussion on these six categories, please see the answer to question number 21519. In this manner the Muslim may distinguish between legitimate and innovative actions. We may list the reasons why this message should not be spread by noting a number of points, including the following. 1. There have been Jahili special occasions and special occasions of the disbelievers and misguided since the time of the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, until the present time. But we have not seen any text from the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, which encourages us to do acts of worship and obedience at the time when others are committing acts of evil and disobedience, or to do prescribed actions at the time when innovative actions are being done. There is no report of any of the well known Imams recommending doing such a thing. This comes under the heading of dealing with sin by means of innovation, as happened in the case of responding to the innovation of mourning on the occasion of Ashura, as done by the Raphidus. By introducing the innovation of spending a great deal and making a show of joy and happiness, Sheikh Al Islam I B N T Amelia, may Allah have mercy on him, said. As for taking the days of calamities as occasions for mourning, this is not part of the religion of the Muslims, rather it is closer to the religion of Jahiliyyah. Thus they missed out on the virtue and reward of fasting on this day. Some other people introduced things on the basis of fabricated hadiths for which there is no basis, such as the virtue of doing guzzle on this day, or applying coal to the eyes, or shaking hands. These and similar things are innovations, all of which are makrior, what is recommended is to fast on this day. There are also well-known reports about spending generously on one's family on this day, such as the Hadith of Ibrahim ibn Muhammad ibn al-Muntashir from his father, who said, We heard that the one who spends generously on his family on the day of Ashura, Allah will give him an abundance for the rest of the year. This was narrated by ibn Uyana, but the fact that he said we heard that and it is not known who said it indicates that the Isnad is Munkati, interrupted. It is most likely that this was fabricated because of the hatred that appeared between the Nasabis and Raphidus. The Raphidus regarded the day of Ashura as a day of mourning, so the Nasabis fabricated reports about it which indicated that one should spend generously on this day and take it as an eid. Both views are false. It is not permissible for anyone to change anything in Islam for the sake of anyone. Expressing joy and happiness on the day of Ashura and spending generously on this day are all innovations that were introduced as a reaction against the Raphidus. Iktidat al Sirat al Mistakim, p. 300, 300, and 1. We have quoted some other valuable words of Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiya in the answer to question number 4033. 2. There are special times for offering du'a and prayers as prescribed in Islam. The Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, encouraged us to offer du'a at these times, such as the last third of the night, which is the time when the Lord, may he be glorified and exalted, descends to the nearest heaven. Encouraging people to do that at a time when no Sahih text has been narrated concerning it is introducing a legislation concerning the reason or the time. 
and going against Sharia with regard to either of them is sufficient to deem the action to be a reprehensible innovation, so how about if it has to do with both of them? In the answer to question number 8375, we were asked about giving charity to poor families at the time of the Gregorian New Year, and we replied that it is not allowed. Among the things that we said there was the following. If we Muslims want to give in charity, we can give to those who really deserve it, and we should not aim to do that specifically on the days of the Kafir's festivals. We should do that whenever there is a need, and make the most of good and great occasions such as the month of Ramadan in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, and other virtuous occasions when rewards are multiplied. End quote. The basic principle for a Muslim is to follow the Sunnah and not introduce innovations. Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning. Say, O Muhammad to mankind. If you, really, love Allah, then follow me, i.e. accept Islamic monotheism, follow the Quran and the Sunnah, Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. 32. Say, O Muhammad obey Allah and the Messenger, Muhammad. But if they turn away, then Allah does not like the disbelievers. A.A.L. and Ron 321, 32. I.B.N. Kathir, may Allah have mercy on him, said. This verse states that everyone who claims to love Allah but is not following the path of Muhammad, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, is lying in his claim unless he follows the path or religion of Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, in all his words and deeds. As it is proven in Al-Sahih that the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, said, whoever introduces an action that is not part of this matter of ours will have it rejected. Tafsir Ibn Kathir, 232. Shaykh Muhammad Ibn Sali al Amin, may Allah have mercy on him, said. You should love the Messenger more than you love yourselves, and your faith is not complete unless you do that. Do not introduce into his religion anything that is not part of it. What the seekers of knowledge should do is explain to the people and tell them, Occupy yourselves with legitimate and sound acts of worship, remember Allah. Send blessings upon the Prophet, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, at all times, establish regular prayer, pay zakah, and be kind towards the Muslims at all times. Liko A.A.T. al bab al Matu, 35 5. 3. You are forgetting to do what you are obliged to do with regard to these sins and evils, which is enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil. Offering sincere advice to those who are going against Islam, and focusing on individual acts of worship when there are other communal acts of disobedience and evil which you should not do. What we think is that it is haram to spread such messages and that it is an innovation to adhere to these acts of worship on such occasions. It is sufficient for you to warn against haram celebrations on occasions of shirk and innovation. You will be rewarded for that and you will be doing your duty with regard to these sins. And Allah knows best.